In this video, we will show you how to set up and use your iPad. We will begin by showing you using the calibration dummy setup. Then we will show you how the in vitro setup works with a real probe. This video will focus on impedance measurement, so check other videos for other features. Turn the power on and make sure the lights are illuminated. Take the black BNC to alligator cords and plug them into the aux and ref inputs on the front panel. Then take the red pins and pin them to the aux and ref pins on the dummy. Then take the blue cable, and since we're only using 32 channels, plug it into the 32 channel slot and tighten. Then clip the black alligator pins to the ground pin located on the side of the nipod body like this. To use the nipod with a probe, the glass electrode dish included in the reference electrode kit would be very useful. If you do not have a reference electrode kit, follow a similar connection in your setup. Take the BNC cable that is plugged into the aux port of the nipod and clip the corresponding red clip to the gold counter electrode pin. Then connect the black reference pin from the calomel electrode to the corresponding red alligator clip that is connected to the reference port. Fill the glass dish with electrolyte solution. Neuronexus recommends using 0.1x PBS. Connect the blue cable to the probe adapter and plug in the probe. You may mount the adapter to a manipulator to lower the probe into the dish and you're ready to begin. Now we'll show you how to set up for an in vivo measurement. Because of the absence of a reference electrode, you'll have to make a few changes to the connections. For the in vivo setup, you need to short the aux and iaux as well as the ref and iref BNC pins as indicated by the red lines on the front panel of the nipod. You can use a BNC to BNC connector to short the ref and iref pins. Use BNC to alligator connectors for the aux and iaux by clipping the black ends to the nipod body and by clipping the red pins to each other. Then plug the blue cable into the 1 to 32 slot and onto the probe adapter. You also need to correctly set the jumper on the probe adapter. For an in vivo configuration, move the jumper to short the iaux and iref pins. When returning to the in vitro setup, short the iref and rs pins. The correct connections when you're done should look something like this. And you are now ready to use the nipod for making in vivo measurements. The software, which we will demonstrate next, operates the same as it would for an in vitro or dummy measurement. Now we're going to teach you how to use the software. Go to the NeuroNexus website, and under the support tab is a link for nipod support. Here, you can download the software and drivers as well as the quick start guide. To download the software and drivers, select Nipod Install and Setup. You will need to do this before using the application for the first time. Refer to the Quick Start Guide for questions on this and any other problems. This is what the main Nipod user interface looks like. First, select a probe by clicking on Select, Select Probe, and then the Probe Visualization Interface will pop up. You will need to add each probe to the Nipod database so that you can keep track of the measurements. To add a probe, you can search through the available probes, or you can filter for a specific probe by following the steps on screen. It is helpful to select the exact probe design and package, as the electrode sites will be mapped and visualized appropriately. From the main interface, you can change frequency, waveform, and gain settings. By default, the measurement is done applying a 1K sine wave. For advanced operations, you can change the waveform settings or run a frequency sweep. For day-to-day -day measurements, it is not necessary to change the settings here. For an impedance scan, you can select only the sites you want to measure, or measure all the sites, in either simultaneous or sequential mode. We recommend measurements in sequential mode, as while well Simultaneous mode is quicker, it may be less accurate. Press the impedance button to run the scan. As it runs, impedances and phases will be shown on the screen next to the site. The digital O-scope will show the relevant waveforms. 
Note that your measurements may look different. During the measurement, keep an eye on the waveforms. As long as they show distinguishable sine waves, you need not worry about this window. If the waveform appears to be flat, you may change the gain settings in the main user interface. If they seem noisy, please check the cable connections and or the environment, as this may affect the measurements. Results will be displayed in the probe visualization interface. The color of the sites give a quick visual clue of the impedance level. You can print the data to paper like this. You can export it to either an Excel spreadsheet or to a text file, which looks like this. Or you can save the data and view it later by scrolling through the measurement records at the top of the probe visualization interface. This is the basic operation for impedance measurements. Other features will utilize similar operations and you can see other videos for how to do those.